So the thick ascending limb is where you reabsorb most of the sodium in the loop of Henle. So let's look at that in more detail. So let's say this is the inside of the loop of Henle. So filtrate is traveling up that way, and you want to reabsorb sodium across the walls like that. So here too, of course, just like the proximal convoluted tubule, the walls are lined by cells, and once again, they're epithelial cells. And now that we've already gone through reabsorption in the proximal convoluted tubule, the rest is going to be really easy, because here in the loop of Henle, for example, it's the same story. On the basal lateral side, you have your sodium potassium ATPase that is pumping sodium out of the cell back towards systemic circulation and exchanging it for potassium. And that creates a very low sodium concentration in the cell that drives sodium to diffuse across the apical membrane. Now the only difference with the proximal convoluted tubule is that the transporters here on the apical membrane are different. And for the most part, there's one that you really need to know, and I'll draw it here. It's a co-transporter, meaning it actually transports several things, and what it transports is one sodium as well as one potassium and two chlorides. What's driving this diffusion is the high concentration of sodium out here, and that's what causes it to go in this direction rather than the reverse. So you can see that sodium is going to take this path to get through the apical and then this path to get through the basolateral membrane. But what about potassium and chloride? Well, we're going to have a potassium channel that lets potassium through there and a chloride channel that lets chloride through there. So chloride will take this path and potassium will take this path. And the reason these two will diffuse across the basal lateral membrane in that direction is that their concentrations in the cell will be higher than on this side because they keep getting pumped in across the apical side. 